Hi, I'm Nina Fiore, the founding director of the Astoria Film Festival in the Kaufman Arts District in Astoria, New York. Thank you for joining us. Uh, our festival's coming up in October. It'll be both in person and online. And we've just announced our selections and we have some amazing filmmakers to show you. So we wanted to do a little bit of a preview leading up to October um, to give our filmmakers some exposure and get you interested in what's coming. So today I am thrilled um, first to share an intro video with you about our festival. The Astoria Film Festival is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We produce an annual film festival that highlights short films, feature films, web series, and podcasts from filmmakers around the world, and hold meetups and smaller screenings throughout the year to support local filmmakers. Our founder and executive director, Nina Fiore, grew up in Astoria, New York, and worked in television digital media production for many years with MTV, PBS, Viacom, Sundance Channel, and many others. She also worked in after school education. Nina began the festival with the hopes of uniting students interested in careers in film, television, and digital media production with local experts in the field. The majority of proceeds from our festival go into creating education workshops for local schools, after schools, and community centers. We also run a film fellows program where we provide work, internships, mentorships, and training for students ages 15 to 25 with an interest in film, television, and digital media production. Most of our programming is now done virtually via Zoom for ages 8 to 12, 13 to 18, and 15 to 25. If you'd like more information about our organization, please visit astoriafilmfestival.org. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Today I have with me two of our festival filmmakers and I am very excited to bring them on, both amazing female filmmakers who I look forward to talking to. So our first filmmaker is uh, Jasmine Dorothy Hefner and her film 28 is great, is gonna be featured in our festival in October. Uh, so welcome Jasmine. Hi. Can we get some wild sound on that? Okay, so what we need is for you to cross to this mark here and then turn back over your shoulder like this towards camera. You got it? Okay. Jasmine, tell the DP that uh, she's gonna do something out of frame and to just adjust for it. Excuse me, Jasmine. Jasmine just wanted to let you know just gonna do a little hand action out of frame and to just adjust to it. Tell her to just flow with it. She says to just flow with it. Yeah, tell her to just go with it. I like her eye. She says she likes your eye. <laughs> that's why she hired me. <laughs> she says, uh, that's Hi, how <laughs> are you? Good, how are you? My bad, I was introducing you before showing the film, but uh, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much, Nina. So how are you? Welcome to the festival. Thank and you, how, kind. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came into acting and filmmaking? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess I all started when I was a young kid, but really I graduated with my BA in theater arts from Stony Brook University in 2015 and I've been living in Queens, New York and working in New York City for the past six years. Um, and recently in the past 
um, I guess since fall 2019, have been writing and therefore producing my own work. And that's what I'm most interested in as a filmmaker, is uh, making work that I can also perform in, a la Ricky Gervais, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, uh, Michaela Cole, Josh Thomas, all of these uh, folks who make things that they act in. I find it very fulfilling, and that's, that's where I'm directed as a filmmaker. So how did you get started um, with writing and directing? Like, how did you make that leap from acting to film production? Well, that's a really great question. Uh, so I think what's really crucial for uh, young people, especially to understand about making your own work is that you need to know how to do it. So I um, was a executive assistant for Janice Orlandi, who runs the movement uh, Actors Movement Studio in New York City. Um, and learned a lot about how the industry works through people I met through Janice, as well as working on short films. I've worked behind the camera in addition to my acting experience. And then really, the reason I began writing was because of my work with a teacher named Giles Foreman, who teaches the Yap Malmgrim technique of character transformation and movement psychology, which is a big name uh, for a very big technique in my life, at least. But essentially, one of the things that it talks about is story um, in a very holistic way. And it really shaped how I work as an actress now, and also how I, I guess, how I walk through the world. You know, the great question of what is your life about? Um, and what is this character, what is this story about? And how does this character fit into this story, right? Um, and that's what first led me to writing, was doing all of the uh, backstory work for the characters that I would then play for other people's parts. And I got to a part in my artistry where I thought, well, I want to make stories that I want to make. Um, and that's what led me to writing and then producing. So that kind of fits in with um, this film, 28 is Great, really where you play every part. Like, you know, it, it's sort of very reflective of who you are because you are every part that you play, but you literally play everybody on a set, including the actress. What brought that idea to you? Absolutely. So uh, I turned 28 on February 26th this past year, and I had this like every year for my birthday, I make a list of things that I love to do, and I try to do as many as I can. I call it birthday week, right? And one of the things I wrote down that I love to do is being on set. I just... It's just an amazing energy. You can't find it anywhere else. And so I called my friend, Daniel Welch, who's a um, mostly a still photographer um, and a manager for opera singers, but he does cinematography as well. And I said, Daniel, I want to do a thing for my birthday, but I don't know what. And we got into this conversation about um, how many different hats I wear as a person. I mean, I also was an executive assistant at a hedge fund. I teach chess to children, all these different things. And I've done work on multiple parts of film sets. And we came up with this idea together of doing a mockumentary where we highlight the different things that I've done on set. And when I sat down to write it, it's kind of what it bloomed into was uh, 28 is great. I love it. So it was actually your birthday present to yourself. This film. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's like the most filmmaker thing I've ever heard. Right now. That's amazing. <laughs> If I can mention briefly, so in that same conversation with Daniel, one of the things I was saying is like, it's egotistical that I want to like put myself on camera for my birthday, you know? And so somehow that comment became the genesis of the piece, right? So every the, all the characters in the piece are struggling with ego in a certain way. And I also play all the characters and I wrote it and produced it. And so it somehow becomes this joke about ego in in life but also especially in this industry where the people who i know who are very successful have quite large egos myself included but if you don't have an ego you won't go anywhere right because you don't have that oomph behind your work um so the piece is a play on that absolutely i think if you don't have that ego the rejection will knock you out so you have to, you know, in order yeah. to propel yourself forward, you have to believe in yourself. And I love the yeah. idea of writing your own work because, you know, it's hard sometimes to find pieces that actually represent you well and that you would want to fill that role. So creating yeah. your own thing is really a great way to go about that. Yes, absolutely. And I just find it, I find that sometimes uh, because my foundational training as an artist is within acting, 
most of the artists that I surround myself with are fellow actors. And I find that there, there becomes like almost this emaciation within actors because you're constantly waiting for other people to give you a job to perform your craft. And whereas a painter could sit down and paint five hours a day, whereas an actor, you need other people, you need community and support. And that's what I love about it. Um, and so I think it's very necessary for actors to at least give themselves the choice of creating their own work for that reason. Absolutely. And I was thinking when I saw it, like, did you make it in quarantine since it was just, it seemed like all you. <laughs> right. Well, like, uh, what is quarantine anymore? Right. Like, where's the, where's the quarantine cutoff? Yeah. We made it so, March. So right. We made it March, 2020. Um, Pardon me, March 2021, this past March. It, it's, um, all it's all a blur. It really is. It's all quarantine, <laughs> right? It's all quarantine. <laughs> but so we made it March 2021, and I had been vaccinated at that point um, as a teacher, and my friend had been vaccinated, someone who works for a college campus, Junia uh, Caldera Simao, who was a producer with me. Uh, and then Daniel was on set too as our DP. And it was just us three on set. That whole thing was filmed with just three people. And Junia, who is also our, our producer, like I mentioned, and our script supervisor, was additionally my body double. Uh, <laughs> so, right, that's her in a wig that we probably should have straightened. Um, but it was just us three. And that, you know, quarantine presented such interesting issues for filmmakers and, and theater makers and performance artists. And one of my favorite things about quarantine, um, I made a film, not this past, not this summer, but the past summer that was filmed on Zoom. Uh, and what happens when you have constraints is that you have a box that you get to work within. So it's about like, how can you use the restrictions of quarantine and needing to have a limited set and very few people yeah, to keep everyone safe. Um, how can you turn that into something that elevates the piece you're working on in some way? Uh, and that's what we've been exploring throughout uh, quarantine, I guess. Hey there. Sorry, I was like, I just <laughs> yeah. realized I'm losing power. It's all <laughs> quarantine, you know, it's all it quarantine. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think, I mean, that's led to a lot of like podcasts and, um, Radio plays have taken on a whole new life. I, I don't, my, my dad had a collection of radio plays from like the 30s that, that I grew up with. And to see them kind of coming back is profound, you know, or, or podcasts. I remember at MTV trying to get podcasts started in 2006, you know, and people were like, what are you doing? I think like there was, Japan was like the only place where our podcast got any traction. But anyway, it's great. It's been interesting to see how creative people have found outlets throughout this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I did a, um, I worked with a Knowledge Workings Theater Company to do a full length play right when quarantine started. We did it last summer, so we developed it at the beginning of quarantine, and we did that full length play off book uh, on Zoom and did a seven show run through Zoom wow. that was pay-per-view run and it was this amazing experience and the reason I'm mentioning it is because several several actors in the play um, who are older than I am mentioned that it's like a radio play and what is this mixed genre thing of like if it was a radio play we would be on book and if it was a stage play it would be easier to be off book because you have blocking um, yeah. so all of these things come into play and it's Really, I think that this is like our gener my generation's experimental theater uh, is what's happening now. It's definitely a challenge that I've seen a lot of people rise to, you know, so I, I've really enjoyed seeing how people, you know, figure out how to still produce in these yeah. very hard times. Well, thank definitely. you so much. You are wonderful. I look forward to seeing you at the festival and to sharing your film with everybody. It's it's funny the thing is you say it's about ego but it's such a sarcastic like poignant look at ego that it's it it's hysterical it's very well thank done. You. thank you so much nina that's really kind of you i can't wait either i'm so excited to go to an in-person festival uh it's been a while so it had yeah <laughs> well we did ours last year and um you know let's hope delta doesn't keep us from having a larger crowd but we'll do it regardless it would just be less people <laughs> right 
may Delta bring us together instead of uh, separating well, so, us. So what, what made you choose to submit to Astoria Film Festival? Oh, well, this is a great story. Uh, so oh, Kat, wow. right, uh, Astoria Film Festival promoted a young female filmmaker looking for an actress for a short film. Uh, yes. And it, when I see things like that online, I go, okay, this is, you know, probably a college student who needs someone. But it was filming in my neighborhood in uh, Regal Park in Queens. And I thought, well, this is cool. Why not go do this thing? I didn't have very many chess lessons that day. And so I went and I went to go um, help these wonderful young female filmmakers only High to discover students. the students. High school, High school students. students, exactly. Yeah. They go to Frank Sinatra High School. Kat Elmbaum yeah. was the director there. And we shot this cool little film together. And, you know, they sent me the final copy. And I was very happy um, with the product that we had made in such a short period of time with people who, relatively speaking, have very little industry experience. And it, that's how I got to know a story of film festival through all of the work I know you do now with uh, supporting young filmmakers. And then um, after I did that, I decided to submit to the film festival with my own work. That's great. Well, her, her film is in it. So you're in it in the youth section as well. Yes. I, Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, I'll bring it down. I'm very excited. To <laughs> no, no, please rejoice. Rejoice. It's good. Yeah. That's, Amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 And, and she was thrilled to find you. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to seeing you at the festival. Thanks so much, Nina. You too. Take care. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. And next up, we have Rebecca Anton, who was a Frank Sinatra School of the Arts high school student, just graduated and is now going to the Pratt Institute for Film. Um, young, but still an amazing filmmaker. Uh, let's see which a clip from the film that's going to be in our festival that she did called Delusions. Thank you so Hi. much for joining us. Yay, it's of good course. to see you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in film. Like, what was the thing that kicked you off at such a young age to want to go to a film film high school? Um. So basically, when I was a little kid, I was more towards like the modeling and acting side of the camera. Um, and then... I was introduced to one of my family friends who was a photographer at the time and he showed me like his DSLR and this like huge lens that was like bigger than my head and I was like you know what maybe this is something that I would prefer doing. Um, so I guess that's where it kind of started and then I started talking to more of like my family friends that were into editing and I was like you know what maybe I do want a creative career. Um, so I went to the high school and now I'm going to college for it. <laughs> It's wonderful. And how, how do you feel, like, how has the work you've done in high school kind of affected you, who you've become as a film filmmaker? Because I've known you for now three years in high school. And I've seen I know. You, I've, and it's crazy. I know. I've yes. seen you grow tremendously as a filmmaker. But what do you think? Thank you. How do you feel? You, you, what did you take away from high school? Um, well, it's definitely taught me, like, what I'm more into I guess like I now know that I'm more into like cinematography and writing and I've also learned how to like create stronger stories I'm guessing because um before when I first went into um the film like world I was like you know what I'm just gonna make stories about things that aren't really in my like boat of experiences um and now I've learned how to be more vulnerable with myself and I guess more open with my audience because I've learned yes. through hardships that like that makes more authentic work and 
it makes people feel a little bit more, um, you know, like, it feels like realer, you know? It, it, it helps the people going through similar situations in so many ways to feel like yeah. they're not alone. And then that connection to you and people. your film. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but it's, it's hard to put that out there. Like, how do you muster up the strength to put that out there on a, and you know if you want to talk a little about what delusions is about and kind of what led you to create it and if you had any hesitation about creating it oh yeah i had so much hesitation um but i was creating delusions for an assignment from my film class it was um create a short experimental narrative piece about something that you've been through personally. And that was like the first time that I really had to make something that really hit home. Um, Delusions is about an eating disorder and a young female like dealing with it and, you know, coping with it, honestly. And like at the end we see her like kind of getting to a better place. Um, We don't see her fully get there, but you know, it's like baby steps. do you but, ever yeah, fully get there in, in that situation? Yeah. I think it's always an ongoing struggle. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I was, like, brainstorming for this film. I didn't really know if I wanted to put it out or not. I was like, you know what? Like, uh, do I really want to make this? Um, and then I brainstormed, and my film teacher was like, you know what? Like, I think this is something that you should make. And I was like, uh, we'll see. Um, so I kind of dived in without really knowing what to expect. Honestly, if I knew what to expect, I didn't. I don't think I would have made it if I knew like (laughs) what I was going to go through. Um, Yeah. Cause I remember the first time um, we were supposed to like do peer critique and it was like on zoom and it was the first cut, which is always like the worst cut. And Uh, and, and I've been in your peer critiques. They they can be brutal. (laughs) Oh yeah. No, my film class does not have a filter. It just really, (laughs) oof. Um, but yeah, I was just sat there like on my Zoom call and I was like, oh no, like what are they going to say? <laughs> so yeah, that's how but, it came to be, the, I guess. the end result is gorgeous. Yeah, thank the you so much. I, I mean, many judges were just like, who is this girl? <laughs> like, where did she come from? I'm like, she's a high school student. <laughs> yeah, high school. So how did you pick Pratt? For, I know you were kind of struggling at one point of where to go. Yeah. What, what did you decide? I don't know. I went on, like, one of their Zoom calls, and it seemed like the people were really, like, friendly and genuine. Um, and then they were talking about, like, how they're alumni and, like, what they're doing now. And I was like, you know what? Like, I can maybe see myself there. Um, and I went around the, like, campus a couple of times. I, like, just walked around and I was like, you know what, I can maybe see myself here. So I think I'm just jumping into it, you know? Like, I don't really know what to expect, but I'm going to hope it goes well. I am sure it will go well. And I love that yeah. you're, I know we talked about this, but I love that you're staying in New York because there's such a community here for film. So it's, I mean, there, you can find yeah. them all over, but uh, you already have such a strong connection to a lot of filmmakers here. So. Exactly. Like, why? I'm glad. You, personally, I'm glad you're staying. So <laughs> I'm glad too. So Rebecca's also been working with me as um, as an intern this summer, and uh, she's been helping out. We're creating a film with the Mount Sinai Queens Hospital, where we're we've been working with the nurses in a film workshop, and then they decided that they wanted to interview hospital staff about their experiences over the past two years. And so we've been interviewing the hospital staff and it's um, and Rebecca's been a huge help in that. And it's been very emotional. So uh, I know <laughs> well, it's crazy. Ha- has it been what you expected? I-, I don't think I even expected it to be the way it is. Yeah, I didn't expect it either. Because um, like, you know, when they open up about those stories, I'm like, oh, my God, like, please don't cry. Like, that's so sad. Like, everything's just like, like, you know what well, they're, they're going they're through. They're crying, but... so you can try. Yeah. I think it's a- yeah. Filmmakers exactly. don't cry. Is that... <laughs> yeah. No, but it's like you wouldn't like. It's you're weird trying because, to hold it together. Yeah, it's like it's like now you're getting personally told what these people went through. Like you're meeting them. Like you're interacting with them. It's not like these crazy people with like crazy masks and like all those like protection gear. Um, it's like people that have lives and have families and they're dealing with that. So it's crazy. Yeah, no, it's, it, it hit me in a different way too. 
So uh, uh, yeah, it'll be good. We'll be we'll be also premiering that at the festival. Yeah, and Rebecca's been one of the filmmakers on that. So, <laughs> what do you have coming up? Anything that you've been working on? Other projects? Or um, just getting ready for school? I've just been getting ready for college. Honestly, I took like a break because the entire year was just really rushing getting through a lot of different projects so i think now two months of break and then back to pratt and back to work were you um remote the whole time this year or did you go in at all i How went in for like two months um so i had a senior year for two months um it wasn't horrible honestly like it was bad at the start because all the films were made like with little to no crew um so it, it was like a different, it was like a weird change. Um, but like for the last two months, it wasn't like too bad. So it's okay. Well, fingers crossed you get to actually make films at Pratt and not be remote. Oh, <laughs> but, I... You know, I, yeah, it's, it's all crazy. After, after all, talking to all the medical personnel, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I know, like, oh, like I don't they're, want it they're to worried, get worse. They're worried about the fall, but fingers crossed. And looking forward, you'll be at the festival. Rebecca will actually be one of the assistants at the festival. You'll be interviewing and, and filming and <laughs> mod moderating panels. She's like, I yeah. am. <laughs> cool, I'm ready uh, for it. She'll be, she'll be starring in a panel and your film will be featured. So I can't wait for the festival. I look forward to having you there. I look forward to seeing you in person again. Yes, same. Thank you so much for being <laughs> on this. Course. And for everything and for being wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Of course. Bye. Bye. I know it's the wave. It's the wave. So that's our show for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This is Astoria Film Festival in the Kaufman Arts District in Astoria, New York. And we'll be bringing you these uh, pretty often now between now and October so that you can see what's coming up both online and in person, astoriafilmfestival.org. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you.